Hey guys, what's happening? So, had this customer bring me this printer. Uh, if you're not aware, that uh, I kind of run like a 3D printer repair side hustle. Um, so I fix 3D printers all the time. Um, okay, so yeah, customer brought this to me. I never actually, we never worked on one of these before. And it was actually broken. I've already fixed it, and I'll show you how to do. But it's a uh, teeter time, um, kind of like a little mini printer, and totally enclosed printer, which is pretty cool. Um, I haven't actually got this working yet, but there's some definitely pretty cool features, and I'll show them to you. I mean, I don't, I'm not 100%, I, I really don't like this printer very much, because of, uh, you know, there's no micro, uh, there's no uh, SD card slot for uh, files and stuff. I mean, there's Wi-Fi and stuff, but this thing was actually broken off here. There's a little plastic piece I had to redo um, that holds the actual uh, the carriage onto the actual rails right there. Um, I guess that's pretty common to break, so I, I designed a new one, printed it. And uh, put it on Thingiverse. Um, okay, let's take a look at this thing. So it's designed. You can do ABS printer, um, but one of the cool little features about this printer is like this is the actual like the uh, see that right there. You can see that. But that right there is like a BL Touch. That's actually the uh, offset sensor right here. Um, so cool printer. I mean, it's. Uh, Cool that it's enclosed. I mean, that's probably the only thing I really like about it so far. Uh, this looks like it comes off too easily. This should snap into place somehow. I can feel like that could be an issue. Probably not, but... Um, let's look at the back of it. It came with this little spool of uh, stuff. Um, so this is actually how I got it. Like I said, the, the carriage was off there, so I fixed that. Um, and then I had to put this PTFT. I think that's how it goes in the picture, you know? They have PTF e tube. Um, so I'd be curious to see what kind of control board they uh, are running here. So what is the axis? It looks like little mini, little mini uh, linear rods. Um, and you have USB in the back. But like I said, I didn't see any sort of place uh, USB for like uh, for files. Um, so which kind of sucks because if you have an SD card or USB, you know, maybe want to manually print. At least I haven't found one yet, so I'm looking around for one. Let's see it here anywhere. Okay. Let's see. Power button. So I would suck if the only way to print this thing is wireless network or uh, direct USB. Um, but they actually do have their own software, their own slicing software. Which is another kind of no-no. I mean, it's it, it, it's cool. I mean, it'll work, but you know, it's not like um. I mean, what if you want to use Cure? Some of the advanced features of Cure, you know. And I think this. I don't know if this company is still in business or not. They might be. I'm not sure. But I don't see an SD card slot anywhere. I mean, it has a touch screen. So let's fire this up and I'll show you what, what's up with this thing. Let's power this on. Yeah, it does come with top covers and stuff. So it's, it's a very well built printer. Teeter time. Um, so what do we have to do? Initialize. Yes, initialize machine. It goes through. I don't know if I can do that with that thing in there or not, but it's going to go back and home all the axis. And then. No. Um, let's see. Calibrate. Auto. So if you can see that it's going to go up there and it's going to hit the hot end, the nozzle end, and that's how it figures out the offset. That is very, very, very unique. And this is the only printer that I've actually ever seen that's done like this. So, um, yeah, I've never seen a, an auto bed leveling sensor like that before. Just a little thing on the hot end, or the, the hot bed, or the heated bed. Um, LED light too, that's pretty cool. Um, okay, yeah, the lights are back here in the front here. That's another pretty cool feature. Um, oh yeah, look at that. Like I said, they, they're, they're marketing this thing as being able to do exotic materials like nylon and ABS and like, uh, what's the other one, uh, polycarbonate. So 
So I'm guessing this is like a little heated chamber here, like some kind of little heated fan right here. That is, like I said, there's, it, there's, it, it, the problem is it's really proprietary, right? What's that do? But no. Um, information. Let's see, uh, config. Okay, so 2.139. Alright, so it's connected to my Wi Fi. So I gotta install the software and see if uh, I can get this thing to work. I mean, I w if this thing was actually a cure based, I mean, I've tried, but I've already been, I've tried to get it going on Cura so far, no luck, but um, I can say, I don't know what kind of firmware's on this thing. I don't know if this thing's running Marlin or some sort of proprietary firmware. Um, let's look at the bottom. Maybe I can see from the bottom. Uh, I guess this is more like a <laughs> in-depth technical review. Um, I think it fell down. Well, because I want to know how what, what makes this thing actually work. Um, Alright, let me get their software going. I, I, it's going to suck if I have to install like proprietary software just to get this thing to, to work. But yeah, one thing I forgot to mention was what was odd is they spent all this time and money building this shell in plastic, you know, uh, molded, which is, you know, it's uh, injection molded. And then the head itself, the carriage, is all 3D printed. So, um,. Yeah, that's definitely, uh, and that's, like, the whole thing is basically, like, uh, injection molded, except for the carriage. This definitely seems like it's proprietary. Mini 2 even shows up differently on USB, but that's not like your standard, typical Marlin uh, USB. Um, yeah, it requires separate drivers, one of those drivers, one down on those two. Um, yeah, I don't really like the proprietary stuff. Um, all right, get the software installed, show in folder. Extract. Okay. Two time driver. Alright, now I'm hacked. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna get the software installed too. Alright, so I did the load process. It actually came with ABS. <laughs> it's definitely not, uh, I mean, if you're starting out in 3D printing, you definitely don't want to be printing ABS. All right, I guess that. Okay. All right, we're loaded. Yeah, that's definitely no, no, ABS, if you're a beginner. Um, but I guess we'll see with this heat in chamber. Um, all right, so I have the software installed, but it's really, it's, I, I'm trying to think if it's a, it's a like a clone of Kira, the, the old, like old versions of Kira. Uh, yeah, I don't really like how this thing is not. I don't know if this is even based on Marlin or not. Uh, All right, so here we go and do a calibration cube. Um, like I said, I've never printed with even this kind of printer, so I'm gonna do 0.2 milliliter thickness. Actually, you can't even go below 0.15. I'll just do two. I'll do the faults here. Infill uh, 20%. Uh, normal. Okay, so very basic. Okay, let's print and see what happens. Alright, so I'm guessing it's going to start heating up the, the nozzle. Okay, it's heating up. And that thing. This is funny. <laughs> ABS. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, ABS is definitely not beginner material. Um, okay. Alright. Yeah, well, I, guess, I guess I'm concerned about the offset, you know, like the, the nozzle offset. So hopefully that will, uh, it will automatically pick it up. Um, because I really don't know what's, what, what kind of G-code this thing is generating. I have no idea what the commands are, if it's G29, G28. Yeah, what's funny is sometimes 
you know, they try to make this stuff easier. Uh, you know, they try to simplify for beginners, but it actually makes it more difficult for me. Because then I have to relearn their software. It's getting ready to go. Can't even see it. So I can't even get in there to adjust it, you know? <laughs> oh, that's gonna be horrible. See right there, the little booger right there? Yeah, I can't even get in there to grab it. So. Are they, are they building a raft? What the fuck? What are they doing? I they think they're building a raft. I said no raft. What the hell? Well, I guess we'll let it run, see what happens. Um, another thing I, I'm thinking too is the voltage for the hot end is going through this the ribbon cable here, which I don't think is very really good. So um, you're putting, I think you're you're putting a lot of current over a small wire. Stopped. Weird, man, weird. Let's see, it's still grabbing the filament. This was my printer. I would take all these electronics out and convert this over to like an SKR board. Look at that. What is going on with this thing? I mean, obviously the offset's not right. The problem is, if you offset with the nozzle, if you offset with the tip of the nozzle, right, and it's not hot, if you have a little piece of like a uh, filament, sticking out, it's not going to give the right offset. Um, yeah, you're going to, I mean, like I said, it's going to, your offset will be off. What is going on with this thing? It's not that bad. I mean, for ABS, I mean, normal ABS is like really trying to get in the light. Um, Uh, yeah, I mean, it looks good. I mean, I don't know what the deal at the bottom was. It seems like the offset wasn't correct. But, um, yeah, this is, I mean, having the nozzle hit here, that's going to be a non-stop issue. Yeah, because everybody's going to have stuff on the end of their nozzle. So it's not going to be accurate. So, I don't know what that is. But, you know, small printers always print better than big printers. Like, you're never going to get the same quality. Like, I, I, I always print to my little old printer mod over that big one, because the big one, just too much jerk, too much inertia, where you're much better off, you're gonna get much higher quality prints on a small printer, if you have a small part. But, yeah, look at this mesh bed, too. It's, it's actually holes of mesh. So, um, yeah, that's gonna be a nightmare to clean. I don't know, so yeah, if I, All right, it does work, but if this, you know, if I was learning 3D printing, I definitely wouldn't get this. I'd probably get like a Creality Ender 3 or something like that to learn. There's way more documentation out there. It's based on Marlin, easy to troubleshoot. You can use Cura. You know, I definitely wouldn't get this thing. Um, no way. You know, no SD card. Um, I don't know, just too many things with it. So, all right. Um, it does work, though, so... Yeah, I mean, that's, I don't know. All right, guys. Cool.